Hello everybody, today we will be presenting our NART VR project. These are the team roles for everyone that helped in developing this project. We have Kevin Diaz Lopez as the team lead. For documentation, we have Taha Cameron and myself, Steve Galvan. Our communication lead is Daniel Ramirez. Our project planners are Keith Huang and Noah Castro. For the architecture, we have Jesse Francisco. And our software engineers are David Hermosillo and Zudong Lee. So this is the agenda of what we plan on discussing. We have the project overview, functions and uses, functional and non-functional requirements, the Unreal environment, and a recap of what we have discussed. Our project in ArtVR is an interactive photorealistic 3D environment used to portray a digital story. And the story being told is based on the book in the following image, Interactive Storytelling for the Screen by Silky Renee Meyer, who is our liaison for this project. The 3D setting is used as a virtual production set for a short film of the book's launch. And we also provide various tools to help simplify the process of virtual filmmaking, which we'll discuss more further into the presentation. And finally, this was all developed using Unreal Engine 4, which is a game engine developed by Epic Games. Okay, here we will discuss the story being told through this digital world, which is a short film titled Unreal Realities. Uh, the short film is created for the book launch of interactive storytelling for the screen. And the book discusses interactive storytelling as a participatory narrative practice at the intersection of analog and digital space. The film follows a protagonist that gets pulled from a physical world into a digital one where she encounters the book as an interactive experience in which she explores and comes across uh, various characters through this surreal journey. And the film is inspired by uh, The Wizard of Oz. So some of the goals that our liaison discussed is a book lounge that teaches the user about storytelling in an interactive manner. Also, the functionality of live actors being able to navigate through the world through green screen uh, technology. And a rabbit NPC or non-playable character was developed to act as a guide for the user that utilizes uh, artificial intelligence to allow it to roam the environment and interact with the user. And also various virtual sets were requested such as a desert, a hallway, a book nook, office and a city our next speaker is going to be our communication lead daniel ramirez a big challenge when we started creating this project was setting the environment for the book since we are creating an environment inspired by the book we needed to come up with different environments that could help illustrate what the book is about so we had to create different locations that could fit the mood of the book and the environment needed to be lifelike so the actor could be green screened into it Another challenge set to us by our liaison was making an artificial intelligence bunny because she wanted that bunny to be the voice for the viewer. So we had to learn about how to make a bunny do various things such as moving around or to a set location and making the bunny have different poses. The camera was something we set up different angles for when we want to place someone inside the environment so they would have a good angles. Plus, we wanted to have a drone-like camera so it would look like someone was actually controlling the camera. Finally, lighting is a big thing when trying to make something virtual look real. So we had to make sure we gave good lighting in each environment so when we place an actor into the environment, it doesn't look out of place. A big challenge with creating a vision for someone else is communication. And since we weren't able to meet up together in person with our liaison, that created a lot of downtime when we wanted to meet up. <coughs> so we would make challenges, changes to the model depending on the last meeting and would then show it to our liaison to demonstrate what we worked on and get feedback on it. Another challenge was when we made changes because the way Unreal Engine works is whenever you create an environment in Unreal, it is stored locally in your computer. <coughs> so if you wanted to make changes to the model, you would have to compress your files in order to be a seven, five to seven download. And launching the environment took an hour or more, so it was a lot of downtime compared to if we were in person. <coughs> I want to give special thanks to our advisor, David Crumb, who guided us with understanding how to make 
our big ideas into reality. And special thanks to our liaison, Professor Meyer, for her commitment to help us create a great senior design project and allow us, allowing us to help make her vision a reality. Now off to Noah. Hello everyone, I'm Noah Castro and next I'm going to be discussing how the project works. So the project is comprised of four main components coming together in the Unreal Engine. We have imported assets, 3D models, sequencer slash camera rigs, and chroma key ins. First, we have imported assets that are merged, modified, and repurposed to create the desired scenes that were required for filming. And object and world assets were combined and reconstructed to form new designs and custom locations here. Second, we have our acquired 3D character model that is controlled via Unreal Engine's blueprints to change the model's animations and behavioral AI. These blueprints are part of the Unreal Engine's visual scripting system, and that's based on a node connecting interface to create gameplay elements within the Unreal Editor, like you can see here. It's used to define classes and objects in Unreal in place of a dedicated programming language. So third, we have the sequencers and camera rigs that are used to manipulate the editor's cameras to get the necessary shots for filming. The sequencers give users the ability to create intricate cinematics and visuals by way of keyframes that the camera can follow. And the camera rigs are used to shoot a more defined path such as panning and sweeping shots that were used most while filming. Lastly, we have chroma key materials are used to bring visual media such as pictures and video recordings into the 3D environment. For the recordings, the users record themselves on green screens and are able to place themselves into the virtual space by way of the materials. Let's move on to the next slide now. Now I'm going to talk about some of the constraints along with the interface. So the first constraint is that computers lacking in sufficient hardware specs are going to struggle to run the Unreal Engine. The software is demanding and it won't run on every computer because of this. The second is that the environment and the interface run solely in the Unreal Engine and not outside the editor. Since it runs solely in the Unreal Engine, booting up times can take longer than others. Third, the camera and lighting capabilities are limited to the software restraints in Unreal. So while the camera and lighting features are more than what's capable in real life, you're still limited to what the software has to offer and for that reason it's a constraint. And lastly, for chroma keying, the user needs proper chroma technology, such as green screen, to be able to record and import themselves into the virtual space. And without it, they can't do this. All right, now I'll be passing things along to Kevin. All right, as previously mentioned by my uh, teammate, Daniel Ramirez, uh, it was really important that we made sure that when it came down to creating the VR set, we had to match the mood and the setting of the liaison story to be able to make sure that her film came out to what she really wanted it to be as it was a form of advertisement for her book that she was bringing out and another important thing was uh, having these interactables in this AI to display certain topics of the book so in case our liaison ever wanted to use this environment in the future she would be able to use it in a way to be able to display her book and uh, certain topics in the actual book itself and one final thing was uh, creating keybinds to be able to activate certain interactables in AI uh, as far as being able to help her during the recording sessions or being able to help ourselves when we were in the recording sessions with her. I think one of the more important things was using sequencers as far as f when it came down to films. Because sequencers allowed us to maneuver a camera through the sets and the environments uh, as when you create certain key points around the set. The sequencers allowed you to put key points, locking location, rotation, aperture, different settings of the actual cine camera itself to allow you to create short films such as the one on the right. These short films were used whether it be in these live recording sessions when we were all together with liaison or when the liaison was only with her own teammates uh, to be able to record these uh, short films or short clips for the film as a whole and the use of sequencers involved placing these keyframes for the camera to follow throughout the time frame as you see right at the bottom these have these little lines and all of those were either locked locations locked rotations or 
maybe another setting of the camera itself. Another key feature for creating these short films was the camera rig rail or the cine camera. It was used to be able to create a more defined path. When using the sequencers, um, we would place certain keyframes throughout the set and it would cause the camera to be able to collide with certain objects or certain buildings. And that's when these camera rig rails come in handy as you would be able to maneuver them in a way so that it wouldn't collide with the buildings or any objects uh, in its path. And now we'll be moving on to Zudong. Function and uses. In our project, we use Unreal Engine to create a virtual world with multiple scenes. Because we are building the sets for filming, multiple scenes will make our set unremarkable and this would also give the filming team one more choices to consider usage in their filming product. Secondly, we need to modify the sets we create to fit our customer demand. This is saying that we need to make adjustments to let the virtual sets be more realistic. On the other hand, we have to create functions that allows for the imports of recordings into the environment we created based on different conditions. We need to create those camera pans or camera still shots to accomplish the filming production. With the use of Unreal Engine Asset Store, we have created an amazing visual world that made our liaison satisfy. Here are some pictures of the assets we use in our project. The first one is the bunny. In the virtual world we created, the bunny is a guide that leads our character to the destination. The second one is the city, which is the picture in the middle. The one on the upper right corner is an office scene, which is that's the good place uh, to talk about something serious. And there's a book note to hold the books. And the bottom left corner is an interactive book, just like the book we could operate in the real world. And here are some examples or changes we made in the virtual world we created. All of those things are the components we made to guide audience to our liaison's book. The one on the upper right is the start of the journey. We put the book in the desert. And the bunny inside the office is to talk with our character. And the hallway on the bottom left to show all the creditors that contributed to our liaison's book. Now, let's take a look at the production. The first picture is the camera pans that lead our character to the book. Then there's a Barney who will talk to our character and we begin to enter the visual environment. The character will walk through a city scene to the office scene and the Barney there will give us more information about the book. After the character interacts with a special book located on the book note, the character will jump into the hallway where we put all the creditors' pictures and also our liaison's books. Virtual environment requirements are where we wanted our virtual world to come specifically. For the environment, we wanted to create objects that the user could change and the actor could interact with. We also wanted to input different scenes and backgrounds to accompany many of the scenes of the film. Uh, lighting was another big challenge and important requirement as we need to add and remove many different types of lighting sources. And we want to adjust the lighting and the reflections uh, to make the scene more realistic and blend in with the actors. Uh, this light also needs to be moved around to, to match many of the other actors in the different types of scenery to add consistency. Uh, the virtual character was something new this semester and we wanted to have a flexible character that could be animated uh, once we put them in and have uh, their body parts be moved individually, much like the rabbit. For recording, the, in the virtual world, uh, we wanted the basic features of screen recording, and it was something we did both semesters. Uh, we also wanted to import and export video into the in and out of the world. Uh, we also wanted to have many movable cameras so the user could record different types of scenes and shots and pans. Uh, chroma keying was also important in our project as we wanted to properly integrate our backgrounds into the recording to make it more realistic. Performance requirements. Uh, this is something we wanted uh, in general for our project to, to accomplish. And so we wanted our virtual characters to guide the user through the book world uh, as they would talk and uh, ask questions to the user. Uh, actions between the actor and the objects need to be synced properly so it also blended in uh, 
properly. The world needs to be uh, more photorealistic, and we did this with the, the lighting and the reflections. And some objects need to be able to be interacted with, uh, so we could uh, have the actors interact with the objects and uh, create the, the sync between the worlds. Uh, next is Kiet with changes to Unreal Assets. Hello, I will be going over some of the changes made to the Unreal Assets. And so first, we have our interactive book asset, which lets us simulate a first-person point of view. Uh, this asset lets us create a virtual book along with the functionalities of an actual book. So we can flip through the pages of the book. We can add as many pages as we want. We can even edit text onto these pages. But the main function that we've changed was the book cover. Um, we needed to give it the texture of Professor Meyer's book. And so it, it was recommended that we use a texturing software for 3D objects. This would have required us to learn a brand new software. However, we were able to bypass this by using an image editing software instead. As you can see on the bottom left, we changed that template into the texture map on the right. Moving on, we have the merging of the modular city buildings and office. Professor Meyer wanted to have both sets on the same environment. And this actually made it easier for both the team and Professor Meyer because it didn't require the constant switching between the maps. And what maps are is pretty much the pre-built environment. So if we isolated out the office only, that would be considered its own map. And maps pretty much help with alleviating the texture rendering burdens if there were many, many textures out there. And moving on, we look at the changes made to the laptop texture mapping. On the right laptop is the original, and on the left is the one we've altered. Uh, next, we have our virtual rabbit character and how we piece together its functionalities to bring more life to the sets. So starting off, we needed to um, piece together the animations because the asset actually came in with individual animations, meaning we would have to drag in a standing animation and if we wanted to run, we would have to drag in another animation that is specifically for running. So in order to unify this, um, there are three main components, which is the blend space, the montages, and the blueprint slash stage machine. So starting off with the blend space, this pretty much tracks a certain condition. So in our case, it was the speed at which the rabbit is moving. So between, say, the values of 0 to 600, uh, the rabbit's animation would slowly fade onto the next closest animation. So for example, at 0, it would only be playing the idle animation. But as it goes to, say, the value 200, the rabbit begins playing the walking animation. On the right image, we have the montage, which streams together some animations very similar to video editing so what we can do is extend a singular animation say a looking around animation we can extend that to five seconds and then we have another animation where the rabbit stands still and play for one second and the, these two components tie together in the stage machine as seen in the bottom image um, so there are two states, as you can see, and there are arrows pointing back and forth. What these arrows do is if you meet a certain condition, say if we press the key 7, um, it would transition over to the look around. And if we hit 7 again, it would transition back to the walking slash running animations. And moving on, we look at the rabbit's AI. And so what we did was we created a blueprint so that the rabbit would 
um, calculate its radius around the environment. So if you look at the bottom left image, the green area indicates where the rabbit can go. And so this blueprint pretty much generates a random point and it, um, once it's calculated that point, it goes to another blueprint that tells the rabbit to move to that location. And while all of this is being implemented, we've also rigged it to the rabbit's animation. This is where the speed component comes in. So we make it so that um, we send the speed at which the rabbit is moving into the animation so that it knows which animations to play. And on the bottom right image, we see the behavior tree, which pretty much is very similar to the stage machine where it unifies all of these components together. And I will now pass it over to David. To make the filming process simpler and more convenient, a camera bookmarking feature was implemented. Cameras can be placed before filming, during location scouting, and added into the system. This would mean that the Unreal operator would only need a switch between the cameras when filming. However, the cameras don't need to be set up beforehand. The operator can also fly around the set and place new cameras and locations that the film team desires during the filming sessions. In both cases, when a camera is no longer needed, then it may be deleted so there is no longer switched to. In the process of working on the project, we ran into a number of issues. One challenge we ran into was trying to produce this film while working from home. Ideally, we would be working in person for the filming of this project, but due to the pandemic, we had to adapt the best that we could. With the help of software like TeamViewer, we were able to make the best out of the challenges of long distance filming. On top of that, when working with Unreal Engine, we were faced with various challenges. When building the levels, we got a texture streaming pool overflow error, which could easily be solved by increasing the allocated memory for the textures. However, that could lead to problems with hardware limitations in the future. Additionally, we also had to figure out how to work with camera rig rails, which also involved the use of sequencers as well as learning how to chroma key images from the book's various contributors. Although the major challenge was learning and working with Unreal Engine's Blueprint Visual Scripting. Blueprints are a scripting system that allows the user to create scripts using a user interface by placing nodes and connecting them via wires. Since the system differs from writing lines of code, we had to learn how the various nodes function and how they interact with each other. Another challenge was working with asset animations and rigging these assets to play the animations when we needed them. Developing the AI behavior for the rabbit was another tough task, which is why it is currently limited in its capabilities. Now, Jesse Francisco will cover what we need to improve on. In regards to improvements, we believe that better functionality with the artificial intelligence could have been done. For example, being able to switch between animations uh, for the rabbit, in addition, we also felt that the incorporation of the live actors into the scenes could have also been improved on. Unfortunately, though, that, that problem was just a result of the constraints we had with the equipment in our disposal. To conclude our presentation, the focus of the ENR VR project was to create an interactive, photorealistic, three-dimensional environment to be used to portray a digital story based on the liaison's book. Throughout the making of the project, we faced various problems and challenges, all of which we were able to resolve. These problems included, but were not limited to learning how to use Unreal Engine blueprints, working with the asset animations, and also manipulating the AI and creating their behavior. As for the environment itself, there are multiple functionalities and uses for it, such as being able to customize the environment to fit the, fit the demand of the customer, allowing imports of recordings into the three-dimensional environment, and also creating cameras to be set on for common pans and shots.